my big idea is actually to close the deal with you because I know, <laughs> because I know that uh, you're trying to decide where you're going and uh, you have options, you have choices. And I just really want to tell you why I'm so gone ho about Chicago. I came here 30 years ago. It's cold. I came from Nigeria. It was really warm and 90 degrees the day I stepped foot in Chicago to minus 20. <laughs> and it doesn't get warm until June 2nd in Chicago. <laughs> okay? Which means that if you really want to go hiking in the outdoors and you want sun every day, don't come here. <laughs> Uh, however, if you want the people with the warmest heart who are going to support your career, then this is where you come. Okay? We're small, we're interdisciplinary, and because we really like each other, we actually get big ideas from one another. So the other thing I wanted to talk about is that as you're making your choices, you can be in a big school, a small school, or a small school that actually acts like a big school because we're a university, and everybody here, everybody in Hyde Park, everybody in Chicago, we actually all get along. And that's a distinction that you may not find in other places that you're thinking about. So my first slide. So why is it that I'm really gone ho about this place? Um, it's because I came here as a doctor from Nigeria where I had no idea of what the science was about. And I came to Chicago and I started at Cook County Hospital where 98% of the patients I was treating in Chicago were African-American, black immigrants, people who didn't have access to healthcare and they went to county hospital. And I came to Chicago because my brother was at Stanford and it was glorious and beautiful that, that, uh, uh, that uh, 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 summer when I visited him. And then I came to Chicago in January and I said, really, is this America? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I interviewed with them in September and they gave me a job right there and then, and I said, okay, I'll come back. But then the distinction between Stanford and Palo Alto and Chicago couldn't be more st stark, right? In terms of the people and all that. And I kept saying, they told me a big lie, <laughs> right? Because I thought this is big America this is wonderful. And then the minute I got to Cook County Hospital, we tried really hard to save everybody, to work hard, the work ethic, the people were great, the people were poor, but they loved me, right? Because I just thought I have to help these people. But then after four years, and after being chief resident at Cook County Hospital, I decided that I've got to get more science into disparity. I just can't stand it where I'm being asked to take care of patients, and I actually don't know. Can you, I, I actually don't know how best to help them. So that's really when I started this idea of doing genomics, uh, because University of Chicago was really, really big on cancer genomics. We were big on, on, um, on, uh, on uh, understanding, and my mentor, Dr. Janet Rowley, had written in the textbook of medicine that chromosomes were important in leukemia. And I read that from County Hospital and I said, I'm coming here. And what I have learned over the last 25 years of coming here was how really important knowledge was, that you really need knowledge to advance our field. And so when, uh, you, know, you know, every 10 years I have to think of something new and interesting to do. So I thought, okay, we have to get knowledge wherever it exists, and it's gonna be in global health. I remember that the breast cancers I left and all the diseases of the world that we really need to solve, they're not only on the south side of Chicago, but they're also important diseases on the south side of Chicago that we would never be able to understand until we get to the root of it, right? So that's why I do genetics, because I actually came in thinking I want to use genetics to solve the problem I saw at Cook County Hospital. And then I spent 25 years doing genetics, and now I'm back out because I know that there's gene-environment interactions, and we're not going to get all of it until we get really good at putting people in context, people putting diseases in context, 
But then to get the, uh, the, the, the foundation for that, we really need lots of data, lots and lots of data. Let me tell you why that's important. So democratizing education and saving lives in our backyard and across the world is really what it gets me really excited these days. And that's because all my colleagues, and last night after I, I came to uh, listen to the uh, uh, Surgeon General, then I went out to uh, a dinner with the, my colleagues in the School of Social Science Administration, who were, in fact, really uh, uh, celebrating 50 years of health policy administration. And during those 50 years, they published papers, they did all sorts of things, saying people need universal uh, insurance and access. And they were talking about how they would write all those papers and nothing happened. And in fact, you know, we talk about Obamacare, nothing may happen, right? Unless we get medical students, doctors like you actually implementing what's important to get good care to people. So now we're all excited about precision medicine, personalized medicine, predict individuals that preempt disease development, personalized treatment. And then the NIH said, and this is good because health disparities is a priority for the NIH. Then they said, oh, participation of diverse populations. And so the participation of diverse populations is what Chicago gets us. In my field, you know, we are chasing the cure for cancer. And then last year, we had about uh, a uh, hundred experts from all over the world. We met in Lugano. How many people know where Lugano is? Most beautiful place in Switzerland. And this is one of the reasons why I'm in Chicago. One of my professors, John Altman, was a leading lymphoma expert. And he would always take a fellow to Lugano with him. So it was the first international trip I went for science. Do you know what else uh, John Altman did? He left money for tickets to the opera, right? That's why you come to Chicago, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because your faculty members are gonna really nurture you and make sure that not only are you good with the work you do in the hospital, you're also gonna get a life. People don't know that people in Chicago actually have a life. Right? They're thinking that you have to be a doctor, you have to be serious, you have to be hardcore. No, you just have to be, you just have to be smart with the way you do your work. So he took me to Lugano, and then I went back to Lugano, and we were saying, oh, we've done so much in terms of knowing the little molecules that drive cancer. But after 100 experts from all over the world came together, we said, look, the 10-point message was published in Lancet as an editorial, Let's do, uh, let's start doing what we know how to do better in terms of prevention, treatment, and care, and learning what we do not yet know more efficiently through new models of research focused on patient benefit, okay? And I think that's really wise as you're thinking about how you choose where you go, right? There are really many different philosophies for medical schools. There are schools that are gonna be really big on implementation science, if that's what you want, then go there. If you wanna start thinking about new models of research, and the new models, and the model that we've tested that's really, really great here is interdisciplinary. So after going to that dinner yesterday, talking to everybody in social science administration, I started my morning today talking to my co colleagues in the Computational uh, Institute. And I'm gonna to end tonight by going to dinner with the director of the Computational Institute because the work I do really needs big data, right? It needs for me to be able to have that language. Because if you talk to a cancer specialist, they'll tell you we've annotated all these therapeutic targets, right? Patients are desperate. And I, I talk about the two groups of patients that I treat, people who are gonna find me no matter where I hide. Right? Because they're savvy, they know the knowledge, they Google and they say, oh, here's this good doctor who treats triple negative breast cancer. So if you don't live in Chicago, you may not get this joke, but they're the worried well from Winnetka. <laughs> <laughs> Winnetka is the northern shores where all the money bags are, 
<laughs> and then this other group of people are trained are my little old lady on the south side of Chicago. Both of them love me equally because they are just amazing patients. But when you have annotated tumors and you know all the things you can target, if you have money, you just want to live so you get money and you, and I, I, the cost of uh, cancer care is so expensive that you can't, in fact, imagine that that's where we're going to stay, treating rare cancers with very expensive cancer drugs. So that's why we're rethinking what we're doing. Because in Chicago, healthcare gap keeps, kills 3,200 black Chicagoans a year, and the gap is growing. Why is it growing? Who, what's, what does 3,200 signal to you? If you hear 3,200 people die, this is how many people died in 9-11 and we went to two wars. In fact, I remember when that first uh, bomb was dropped in Iraq, I said, ooh, there goes my R01. That's NIH funding, right? <laughs> right? Because the more you bomb people, the more that you don't have money to send for R01. So we're talking about sequestration. We're talking about you know, uh, uh, not having enough money for healthcare because 3,200 people died and we went to two wars, and it's been very costly. So now we're in the period where we're all really thinking about how do we, in fact, give people affordable health care? How do we do it all, advancing the science? So this is black, white breast cancer mortality in Chicago, right? People on the fringes are not going to get benefit from this big fancy science that we're doing. And with Accountable Care Act and with everything that we have to do ethically as, as doctors, we can't take that, right? If you look at it for breast cancer, if you look at it for, for uh, colorectal cancer, the reasons why people, we still have a black-white disparity is because we study what's easy for us to study. So I love, I know that some of you may end up going to Boston, so forgive me. But this is really typical of what, how I kid my, my, my colleagues from Boston. So you know they've never treated any black person with breast cancer. But then somebody has money and gave them Boston's mammography van. So they decided, oh, this van's aren't working. Let's take it to Kampala, Uganda, and help them with their breast program. And so they get this boss's, the mammography van, to Uganda. This is the woman who actually walks in Uganda and said, the roads can't even take these vans, <laughs> right? So there are two mammography vans that are parked in front of the hospital in Uganda, and I can call Boston out because they sent it. They spent money to get this there. And I said, where was the evidence that this will actually make a difference on the problem of cancer in Uganda, right? So that's the other distinction with Chicago. We only do things that are data-driven. You will hear about data-driven science coming out of Chicago. We don't like anecdotes. So the reason why we don't like anecdotes is because we really have a lot of people here who are quantitative in their thinking. So this is, if you came through Midway, you may have seen this picture of me. <laughs> All my friends and relatives send them to me because, <laughs> you know, 700 million center for care and discovery. And I actually like the name care because we put the care before the discovery. That's really the other part that I really love about Chicago. We could be a research university, we could be a research hospital, we could want to crack, you know, we crack the atom, do all sorts of really cool stuff that we've done in Chicago. But for me, the reason I became a doctor is because I actually care about patients, right? And so I like the care before the discovery. Some people will like discovery before the care. You can use that to choose where you go, right? <laughs> Okay, so genomics and big data to democratize knowledge, that's the kind of, this is the, the conversation, the next conversation I'm gonna be having. Because anytime people talk to me about disparity, I'm gonna say, what's the cause of it? Is it because like my colleague Melissa said, this women had babies, they had to go to the 10th floor, they couldn't come down, is that why they didn't come to the hospital? You know, for a long time at Cook County Hospital, when somebody came with a big cancer, we always said they were in denial. They were, they denied, you know, they didn't have access and you have arguments. But I know based on my science that that was not the case. 
The case was that they have a very aggressive breast cancer that overnight can double and become big. So no matter, even if they, if they got a mammogram six months ago, they can still come with a big cancer. That's the kind of evidence that you can get when you actually get granular data about what's going on. Collect information outside the hospital, collect information in the hospital, and then try to do it. So that's why I hope some of you who are really interested in big ideas about the fact that we have to have a global approach to our work is that we need lots and lots of data to be able to make sense of what's causing disparities, what diseases should we be focused on. And I'm really glad that at the NCI, I chair the uh, National Cancer Institute and the new director, Harold Vamos, who's a Nobel laureate, and there were two things that he said was important to him when he became the uh, director. He said, I know genomics, it gives me, because you can always get genomic data, you can, you can sequence, you're gonna, we're gonna be sequencing the, the genome for less than $100, and we wanna know what to do with the genome. So he said that's important. And the second thing that was important to him was global health, because there's so many interesting questions that we haven't even scratched in terms of what we should be thinking about. And so Chicago really gives you an opportunity to think locally and act globally. Or is it think globally and act locally? Whatever you want to do. So. <laughs> <laughs>